Okay, so for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to save data that's stored in Python into a text file. Uh, so for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you've already finished running the model and that you already have, um, say, two, three, or even more lists of data uh, that, that you're wanting to save into the text file. And so that's represented by this fitness list, trait one list, and trait two list, right? So each of so these lists have uh, several values, I believe 25 values each uh, that, that are saved from the model. And now, uh, since we're going to be running this model multiple times, we need to uh, save uh, th this data into a text file so we can work with it later after we've finished running all these rep uh, model replicates. So, uh, of course, the first thing we want to do is open up a, uh, a actual file handler so we can write to it. Uh, so let's just use a simple file name like uh, output score data dot CSV. And of course, if we're going to be opening up a file for writing, we have to specify with the W uh, that, that that's the output file. And then we want to say as out underscore file. Okay, uh, so running that alone will just will actually just open up the file right there. Uh, and it'll just open up a blank file for you to start writing to. So the next thing we want to do is make a for loop that counts through all the indexes of these lists because we want to go through, uh, we, we want to create a file that, ha that lists the data line by line where each row uh, contains the corresponding values for each entry. So uh, the easiest way to do that is we start with the for loop and we can say for i in um, range and then we want to get the length of one of the lists. And so I'll show you what this is doing in a second by showing you if we just have it print i you see that um, basically what this is doing is it's creating a, a list that counts from 0 all the way up to 25 right because we have 25 items in the list so if we do a length of the list that gives 25 and then so if we do a range that, that gives this count from 0 to 24. So we're going to use this counter to index into these lists so we can list all of the uh, proper items on the same rows together. And so we can do this uh, by, by building a string for each row and then outputting that into the file. So we can call this string out string and assign it to an empty string. And then let's say we just wanted to put the fitness into each row right now. We can do out underscore string plus equals. And we want to, of course, turn the value into a string. We say fitness underscore list. And then we use that index that's counting. And so if we just print out what we're, what we're doing right now, we can see what each row is doing. And you can see. Uh, each, each line is a row here, and it just has a 1, 3, 5, 7, and all these values that are stored in fitness list. If we wanted to do something similar, and let's say have a comma delimited file uh, that has all three of, of, the, of the values, we could say out underscore string plus equals. We want to add a comma, so it's in between. And then we get the trait 1 list of i. We of course want to turn that into a string, and then sim similarly, we want to do that for trait two. So we do comma trait two list of i, and we turn that into a string. So now you see what what we've done here is as as we count along, we put all three of the values together and put a comma in between. So that delimits what uh, what each value is. So now instead of printing this value out to a terminal, we of course want to put it into out file. So we can do this by calling out underscore file dot write, and then we just pass it the string. And so if we run that right now, it won't output anything. But we can we can run a cat on the output file, which again was called output underscore data.csv. And we see that there's a little bit of a problem here, right? 
all the values are still on the same row, and that's because we didn't put a new line in there. And so we can do this, we can fix this very quickly by just adding that new line. So we do out underscore string plus equals backslash n. And so what this backslash n is called is a new line, and that tells the computer that you want the text following that backslash n to go on a new line. So if we run that and we do a cat again, now we see that the data is stored properly in this file. So one final thing I wanted to uh, make a comment about was that you'll be generating, generating multiples of these files because for each of the experiments you'll be running 30 experiments. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to provide each of these experiments uh, a, a different output file name. So the easiest way to do this is as you're running the experiments keep some counter you can call it maybe replicate or something like that and have it count as you as you complete each experiment and let's say this is experiment 5 that we just finished and then you can you can very simply change the name dependent on uh, the replicate that you're on by just putting it right here as you open up the file so we just turn this the replicate variable into a string and then now if we do an ls in this directory for output files, let's do an underscore and then a star, you'll see that we now have an output 5. So I highly recommend doing this uh, while you're going through or doing your replicates so you don't end up overriding your data and losing a lot of time because um, you weren't careful about naming your files. Peace out! Data done! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's it for this tutorial.